A new man. Ethan Rain returns with a new scheme. We open with Buffy and Riley getting intimate to some rock and 90s music. When Willow busts in saying something broke into the science library and it was breathing fire. Buffy heads in, stake in hand, even though she knows it's not a vampire. But it turns out it is a surprise 19th birthday party for her. And then Riley busts in with a crossbow. And luckily, even though there are other people there that we've never seen before... Nobody notices Buffy coming in with a stake or Riley popping in with a crossbow. Unexpectedly, we focus on Giles during this party and how he feels out of place being in an unfamiliar space with unfamiliar people. Buffy introduces Riley as her boyfriend, and she tells Giles that Professor Walsh is the smartest person she's ever met. Buffy does not mention that Riley is part of the initiative, and when she sent Riley away, I thought that's when she would tell Giles privately, but she still doesn't, which didn't make any sense. She also insensitively bashes Giles for being old and hanging out with a bunch of kids, noting that someone is smart and cool, as Professor Walsh would never waste her time doing that. Later, Spike tells Xander and Anya that he's planning on moving into a crypt somewhere, and they talk about having electricity and access to blood, and it was good to hear them actually bring up some practical points. Buffy is meeting with Professor Walsh, letting her know that she's a slayer, which was a huge surprise to me. I expected that to be dragged out until a super critical moment when everyone was about to die, and it was a completely inappropriate time to mention it. So did I. They tell Buffy that Riley has killed 17 supernatural creatures, which doesn't exactly impress her, and she hesitates to tell them how many she's killed. And Walsh says she is working on getting Buffy clearance to enter the initiative. Giles is dusting his shelves when he realizes it is the date for the demon Prince Barvane to rise. He just remembered that out of nowhere. It seems like he just picked up a book at random. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of funny, but also kind of stupid, so I don't know. I'm kind of torn on it. I was also torn on him dusting things inside of a closed cabinet. Wouldn't that prevent them from needing to be dusted? I mean, it depends on how good the seal is. I have closed cabinets here that are full of dust, so I don't know. Well, they're also full of body parts, so I think dust is the oh, least you of your issues. don't have to mention that. I, I don't... Oh, <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Giles tries to call Buffy, but is unable to reach her, because she's busy telling Riley all about her Slayer adventures right out in public. He's wrestling with the fact that Buffy's been stopping monsters on a regular basis, and how much stronger she is than him, and how much more experience she has. But the talk quickly turns to sex. Well, I'm not even sure I could take you. That all depends on your meaning. Giles visits Walsh looking for Buffy, and it's awkward as hell, and Giles is very clumsy about everything. And even though Giles introduces himself as Buffy's high school librarian, at no point does Walsh say, that's, that's weird. weird, why are you coming <laughs> to talk to me, who are you? Walsh argues that Buffy needs more direction, while Giles says she operates best on her own, which has repeatedly been demonstrated to be blatantly untrue. Walsh says that Buffy lacks a strong male role model, and then boots Giles out. That night, Giles complains about Walsh to Willow and Xander while they go out looking for the demon. It was supposed to rise at sunset, and Giles is surprised that it seems not to have happened yet. Willow mentions that maybe the initiative took care of it, noting that Riley is a member, and Giles is super confused as to what the initiative even is, and is pissed when they tell him Riley and Walsh are a part of it. I enjoyed the scene because of Giles' reactions to everything. He stupidly tells Willow and Xander to leave, saying he can handle whatever's going to happen himself, before realizing that that's stupid too, and packs up and walks out. Ethan Rain steps out of the shadows and starts monologuing, but Giles hears him and comes back, which I also thought was funny. Man, you copied my note exactly right there. <laughs> Giles is happy to be able to take out his rage on this little pissant, but Ethan convinces him to listen, saying something big is coming that's bad for both of them. They go to a bar, and Ethan tells him something called 314 is harming and scaring demons, which is making them angry. He says it has something to do with the initiative messing with things that they shouldn't be messing with. Meanwhile, Buffy and Riley are sparring to both of their amusement and eventually agree to not hold back. Buffy ends up kicking Riley across the room, causing her to worry that she'd injured him, but he is okay. I said, it killed the mood, but unfortunately not Riley. <laughs> <laughs> At the bar, Giles and Ethan are getting drunk, and Giles complains about how nothing has gone well for him despite all his efforts. 
and he spills everything he knows about the initiative. Ethan tells Giles not to worry about anything because he put poison in Giles' drink when he went to the restroom. It turns out that he's joking, but that still means that Giles left him there when he went to the restroom, which is not exactly the smartest thing for him to do. Willow is meeting with Tara to practice magic, and there's some strong symbolism accompanied by some Danny Elfman music as they attempt to float a rose and pull its petals off. Willow says they have to have their mind in tune for it to work, and not telling Tara what they're going to do until they're already supposed to be doing it was a great start to getting them thinking the same way. The rose does float, but it ends up rocketing around the room before exploding. And Willow seems to think that that's not what should have happened, but we've seen her trying by herself and things rocketing around the room crazily. Yeah. Maybe she just sucks. The next morning, Giles wakes up and finds that he has become a demon. He ends up wrecking everything in his room, including his phone and the front door. I thought the mishaps of his unexpected strength were pretty funny. He immediately suspects Ethan and stumbles out to find him. And why did he let Ethan go? He already chained up Spike. Why doesn't he chain up Ethan? Buffy and Willow are meeting for breakfast, and Willow doesn't hide the fact that she was practicing magic, but that she was practicing magic with Tara. But it's not like Tara was a former antagonist or anything, and Willow didn't hide the fact that she attended the Wicca meeting before, so I didn't really see why she felt the need to hide she was practicing with Tara. Yeah, I had that question too. And it's not like Buffy practices magic with her either and would feel left out. And Willow mentions that Giles is sad that Buffy never told him about Riley and the initiative. So Buffy says she'll tell him tomorrow. <laughs> Couldn't she at least call him and tell him not to keep wasting his time looking for them? That would be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thoughtful. Yes. Intelligent. Yes. <laughs> proactive. That would be the thoughtful thing to do. Buffy says everything is going great with Riley, but can't make it more than two seconds past making that statement to start sowing doubt and misery about their relationship. <laughs> she mentions kicking Riley and says she's worried about how he feels about her, even though everything seems totally fine. Giles goes to Xander's and wakes him up, and luckily there's a way to get into the basement without having to go through the house. And it turns out that even though Giles hears himself speaking English, Xander only hears demon speak and drives him out. So then Giles does the next best thing, which is running screaming through the neighborhood in broad daylight. <laughs> That night, so apparently the whole day has passed before the gang has opted to do anything about this. <laughs> yeah, I guess Xander forgot to tell everybody what was going on. <laughs> they reach Giles' house and see the door ripped off and assume the worst. Giles encounters Spike, who is excited to find something that he can kill, but it turns out he understands the demon language that Giles speaks now. A joke that did not land for me was Spike comically measuring out crypts with a tape measure. That kind of passed into too stupid territory. Okay, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> Giles asks Spike for help, but Spike says, why should he bother? So he says he'll pay Spike. And they eventually haggle for the meager sum of $200. Giles says he doesn't want Buffy to find out and just wants to find Ethan. At Giles' house, the gang is seemingly just looking through every possible book to find a picture of the demon Xander saw, which is really stupid and assumes that there even is a picture of the demon in one of these books. But I think that those are their best resources that they have. Maybe this should serve as a lesson that they should have some kind of backup for Giles in case something happens to Giles. But that would involve learning a lesson, which is not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Riley shows up saying the initiative picked up some 911 calls that sounded demon-related. And he says the whole initiative will help. Because apparently he has the authority to just make the whole initiative start to help. And knowing that they have access to 911 calls is an interesting point that will probably never come up again. Spike tells Giles about Fjarl demons, which is what Giles is now, while he drives Giles' car. Giles says he feels he's changing, sensing a need to mindlessly destroy. And he suddenly asks Spike to stop, because he sees Professor Walsh walking, and he just runs after her screaming. Before they continue on. Xander finally finds the demon in a book. Amazingly. And Willow says it can be killed with silver. At the same time, Walsh calls Riley to relay the demon sighting, but probably doesn't mention how she ran screaming like a lunatic. From her description, they recognize that it was using Giles' car, and Buffy says demons wouldn't randomly steal cars, so someone might be using magic to control it, which could also have caused the interference with Willow's spell, as opposed to Willow just being incompetent. So Buffy and Riley head out for supplies, Buffy grabbing a silver letter opener, while the rest of the gang stays at Giles' house. Spike asks around for Ethan at the bar, and for some reason Giles is also in the bar, but it's okay because he's hiding under a blanket. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's so stupid. And they find out where Ethan is staying. Buffy busts down the door to the magic shop, saying she doesn't have time to play nice. But Riley says he has a master key for all the stores on the street. The initiative clearly has a lot of resources that Buffy could use to her advantage. And I want to see what's going to happen along those lines, if they're actually going to take advantage of each other in a logical way. Probably not. That's what I suspect. Buffy finds a receipt with Ethan's name on it, so Riley calls the initiative to start a search for Ethan. Riley tells Buffy that his orders are to not take Buffy along when they locate the demon, which doesn't really make any sense, and Buffy says she's going to kill the demon regardless because it did something to Giles. Yeah, it was weird how Riley felt that he had jurisdiction to order her around. Yeah, he says it's a military operation now, but she's not part of that. Right. Not to mention she clearly has more experience and knowledge than he does. Also that she does whatever the hell she wants anyway. Yeah, he must not have looked at the title of the show. As usual, it was a pretty contrived reason for them to be at odds with each other. Giles and Spike are being pursued by initiative vehicles, so Giles jumps out and makes his way to Ethan's hotel room. And strangely, neither of the military vehicles notice a giant demon jumping out of a car 10 feet in front of them. <laughs> and Spike's chase ends very anticlimactically. You just try and stop me, you stupid jargon. Giles busts into Ethan's hotel and starts tossing him around, and when Buffy and Riley show up, Ethan tells her the demon killed Giles and is now trying to kill him. There's a big fight between the four of them, and Buffy ends up taking Giles down and stabbing him in the chest, but she recognizes him at the last second. And luckily, the letter opener is not actual silver, so Giles does not die. Afterwards, Ethan is moping and has reverted Giles somehow. It wasn't clear to me how Giles turned back into a human. Ethan had to do it, but they don't explain how he did it. Well, it's magic. How did he do it in the first place? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so you can turn me into a demon? <sighs> You're already one on the inside. Did we not mention your cabinet's full of body parts earlier in this recording? And Ethan is gloating that Buffy can't do anything to him, which isn't entirely true. She could still beat the crap out of him. Or even kill him. She's killed people before. Right. But Riley calls in some of the initiative guys to arrest him. Much to Giles' delight. Riley says they are working for the U.S. military, which is the first time we've heard about that connection. Riley is supremely impressed at Buffy's planning and execution, which I could not stop laughing at. But we were supposed to take that conversation seriously. I mean, he's seen how much trouble she has getting food in the cafeteria. I think what he really meant was, I'm impressed at how strong you are. Later, Giles tells Buffy that people can call him on the phone if they need to tell him anything important. And Buffy apologizes for not telling him about the initiative. Giles says that Ethan may have been right about the initiative, saying they don't fully understand what's going on there, or what their end goals are. But Buffy says, eh, it's okay. Walsh tells Riley that Buffy is undisciplined and potentially dangerous. But when Riley defends her, Walsh says he's probably right. Then she goes into a super high security door, labeled 314. Yeah, it's where they keep all their pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd lock that uh, shit up too. You don't want people stealing uh, that. Okay, let's wrap this one up. That's why we have so many subscribers, man. <laughs> We're just waiting for those awesome jokes. <laughs> uh, a new man, overall. Ethan just walking out of the shadows in that room, I guess assuming Giles would be there, was very unexpected and very weird. Why he chose now of all times, was never really explained. Well, he probably knew about the demon that was supposed to rise and where it was supposed to be and that Giles would be there. Then I'm glad Giles happened to remember and spur the moment that that was the date. Otherwise, Ethan would have just been standing there all night. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and what about that demon that was supposed to pop out of the ground that never did? It's not like Ethan made it up because Giles saw it in one of his books. Yeah. Did the initiative deal with that? And then Ethan was just hiding and waiting for them to leave. Giles said the ground should have been disturbed, like something popped out of it, and we didn't see any of that. Yeah, there are some questions there for sure. Ethan's explanation that this new threat is blundering into places it doesn't belong and is throwing off the balance had no backing to it other than, yeah, the demons are all scared. Shouldn't that be a positive? I mean, if the initiative turned out to try and control demons and the show turned into doom, then I would say it's no good. But there's no indication of that. And after everything Ethan has done, including to Giles himself, all it takes is a few drinks, and Giles is willing to let bygones be bygones. Like you said, he even left him alone at that table. 
I didn't buy that. If anything, I would think that boozing up would increase Giles' anger with Ethan. People are going to comment that he was dealing with his own insecurities with everything else going on in the episode and his midlife crisis and whatever. Uh, then I would say, moving on, the interaction between Giles and Walsh was pretty good, and while it served the plotline of Giles being out of step with everything, it's also good once in a while to see someone who can hold their own with Giles because he does pride himself on being the holder of all knowledge, which the gang kind of reinforced when they said, let's just look through all of these random books because we don't know what else to do. But Buffy not telling Giles about Riley and Walsh in the initiative, not just at the surprise party, but apparently at no time between when they stopped the apocalypse last episode and now, didn't make any sense. And her explanation later of, oh, I thought I did that, was particularly stupid just to further Giles' I'm out of the loop storyline. And supposedly, the initiative has been around for quite a while, but only now is starting to frighten and make an impact on the demon world? That doesn't seem likely. And we confirm in this episode that it's a bonafide military operation, so it seems like it would be more well-known and not putting the fate of the world in the hands of a bunch of college jocks who can't keep their dicks in their pants. And they're supposedly hidden to the public, but in this episode we saw two giant military vehicles on a high-speed chase through the center of town. And before, we saw Riley and a bunch of other commandos all messed up with rifles running through a college dorm. So, I'm not sure about that. It was cool to see Willow get together with Tara, especially since she had just appeared a couple episodes ago. I'm glad they didn't wait until they ran out of other plot lines before bringing her back out of necessity, and I assume they'll bring her back again. It was nice to have character development presented in a non-shitty way. The humor in the show has done a pretty hard shift to physical comedy, which I'm all about, and the show handles it pretty well, which I'm happy about. Play your strengths, you know? But what happened to Spike? He crashed, but right in front of the pursuing vehicles. Is he going to be back in the labs next episode? Because there's no reason he shouldn't be. They're looking for him. I'm going to be kind of annoyed if he just shows up next episode hanging out with everybody. And lastly, I thought there would be more of a focus on it being Buffy's birthday, because we've seen in like the Thanksgiving episode, she wants things to be centered around the things she is thinking about and her birthday you would think she would tell everybody oh you're ruining my birthday oh why can't i just have a normal birthday da, 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 da. but none of that happened so i don't know this is in line with the past few episodes where i enjoy watching the show so that's a plus i gave this one a b minus i also gave it a b minus and i agree that the humor is better than it used to be but also that a lot of things still don't quite make sense it was cool to get a giles episode after so long without one and Ethan Rain coming back was good too. But I had even more questions. What exactly was Ethan's plan? Just to turn Giles into a demon and have Buffy kill him? Is that it? Wouldn't there be easier ways to kill Giles? It seems like Ethan likes to play games though. Yeah, that's true. But it also makes him look kind of stupid. I didn't say it didn't. At least they captured him this time. Well, they really didn't capture him. If Riley wasn't there, they probably would have just let him go. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> After Spike crashed Giles' car, did he get a new car? Does he even know that Spike crashed his car? Does he even know what happened? Or did Spike just disappear from Giles' mind? And they just had to stick in some out-of-place drama with Riley saying Buffy can't come along at the end, which made no sense. And it didn't even lead to anything, so why even put it in there? The other stuff between Buffy and Riley actually made some kind of sense, so I didn't mind that, even though I still wouldn't say I liked it necessarily. Willow is still being stupid with magic, just a couple of episodes after everything went haywire with that, and now she's hiding her activities with Tara. For a second, I wondered if Tara could somehow just be in Willow's head, but then I remembered that other characters had interacted with her last time, so I guess not. Are they setting up another magical problem of some kind? It seems like maybe that's what they're gonna do, and I still think the other characters are pretty stupid for not telling Willow to stop messing around with that kind of stuff. Is there no sort of mentor that they can find for Willow? She's not the only person on Earth who practices magic. Yeah, I mean, I would think at this point Giles still would be the best candidate. Right. But even though he knows that Willow is messing with this kind of stuff, and he has been directly affected by it, he still doesn't seem to step in to even say anything about it. Yeah. But I did enjoy this episode. Again, a lot of it didn't really make sense, but the humor and the focus on Giles made up for that. 